All right, Odegaard last kicked a ball when Arsenal was losing to West Ham, three goals to one at <coughs> the London Stadium when Arsenal was playing in that game of the Carabao Cup. Sixth round, they were knocked out by West Ham, three goals to one. And when he came in through, he scored the consolation goal. And by the way, most Arsenal fans were really expectant that this guy is obviously going to show up as Arsenal goes ahead, obviously, play against Sheffield, Sevilla, and Burnley. But it never came as to plan, and Arsenal found themselves in a situation of not having their captain. But we have a very good story coming in from an Arsenal correspondent for the Evening Standard, known as Simon Collins, that Odegaard is on track to return on Saturday as Arsenal takes on Brentford away in London. Welcome to this channel. Smash like button, comment and share. Continue to subscribe. Having reached 18,000 subscribers, that's not the end of the war because YouTube has close to a billion close to <clears throat> close to 4 billion users. So and we really need to get to see that we obviously get to that, you know. Viewers views are really huge and that means we can obviously hit a million subscribers on this channel. And guys, that's how I said when I said this channel that will soon hit 10,000 subscribers. And now you see, we are going to hit 20,000 subscribers. We are less by mm, 1,900 subscribers to hit 20,000 subscribers. And I know by the end of this year, we would have gone ahead, obviously hit that mark. And it will be a celebratory monument in here. So... The other story we are talking about is Bernardo Silva. Remember, he's one of those players that played for Benfica before he left for Monaco. And Monaco saw him come to the side of Manchester City. Has come out and really said he would love to go ahead. He would love to go back and replay for Benfica. And lastly, in the mix, it's none other than Levy Colwell and Malo Gusto. Injuries, injured players at Chelsea that missed out on the international break and they expected to show up as they pay a visit to Newcastle over the weekend. So it's going to be an action-packed weekend, but we thank God for the gift of life. You know, where I am right now, it's already the 22nd of November and we're here to obviously bring you what you guys will make you and make you jump up and down in here on this channel. Now, Martin Odegaard, what do we have to say? What does Simon Collins have to say about the player? The Arsenal correspondent for the Evening Standard. He has confirmed us that Martin Odegaard is on track to return for the game against Brentford. That is it. He is on track to return for the game against Brentford. If you are an Arsenal fan outside there, this is the biggest news you'll ever want to get from the international break. You know, as he missed out on to the game of Netherlands, sorry, Norway, him and Haaland were out. And uh, they lost to Scotland. And having lost to Scotland, that obviously put them in a situation that they cannot obviously go into. <coughs> they cannot obviously go into the playoffs. So that went ahead to mark the end of their stay in the group stages and their dreams to play in the Euros of 2024. That is next year over. So... Odegaard is not going to play anymore for the Norway and he's obviously going to concentrate at the national at the Arsenal team and <clears throat> he's really ready and ready and ready. One will say that maybe Ateta really wanted to do this so that he obviously rests his captain, but I don't think so. Odegaard is the captain of the national team and he knew that if I told him and Haaland we are part of that team, they would have gone ahead to obviously push this team to be very much competitive <clears throat> and show up against teams like uh, Scotland, because if the, if that game ended three two, when Scott when Scott when ne, when Norway never had Odegaard and Haaland, how would it have been if at all they had this duo or this pair? They would have gone ahead to obviously be more threatening because Haaland is clinical. It was a matter of him scoring goals, and if at all they scored two goals when Haaland is away, that means they would have gone ahead to even score more when Haaland was there with Martin Odegaard because Martin Odegaard exhibits exactly what you call or exhibits exhibits or represents the real meaning of the word creating attacking midfielder in and on the pitch and Haaland presents or describes the best meaning of a number nine in the world who finishes off those balls clinically that is the guy i'm talking about and as it stands here 
we're here to discuss this guy. So we are here to discuss <coughs> Martin Odegaard on his return as Arsenal player against Brentford. When he returns, you anticipate that if I'm Mikel Arteta, I don't really start him. He has to come off the bench because in the midweek there is a game that Arsenal is going to play. They're hosting RC Loans at the Emirates and you really understand what that means. It means that Arsenal are really, 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 really having a very good squad. You know, you can start Declan Rice, Jorginho and Fabio Vieira or Kai Havertz in the midfield three and later get Martin Odegaard on if at all things are not going on as planned because you're going to play against a physical team you wouldn't like your players like Odegaard to come in through and start that game and get knocked by this team it's better you obviously do the needful and bring him on and if at all it happens to that Arsenal gets a comfortable lead then why bring him on you know and then prepare for the game of RC Lons. but I see a win of Arsenal registered all written all over that game as they play away at Brentford but Brentford is also really having its players that are really ready to take on Arsenal but Arsenal is really solid I've seen Saliba today play for the French national team when they draw I think 2-2 with Greece guys this guy is really 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 one of the best central defenders in the world and is going to have to put in a shift and I think it's just a matter of time for him to replace Rafael Veran. you know Rafael Veran uh, hung his boots up at the national team and uh, He's the manager of France is how so much into Konate, um, De Sassi and Jules Conde. Those three are the three central defenders ahead of um, William Saliba. But let facts be facts. This guy is really good. He's the best French central defender. And I think... The champs is obviously not really trying to obviously rush him into this, but in the Euros, I anticipate he's obviously going to play into that central defense. He playing the Champions League obviously sends a message to the champs that you need to obviously come through under the midfield. So Brentford is having a very good squad, but I think they're having a, a threatening front line. But I think at Arsenal, Saliba and Gabriel Magalhães will obviously close them in, and Saliba is returning. Player is going to hate to play his last game for France, meaning that. Tomorrow, he's going to be at London Conley. And he'll train, I think, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then Saturday, they travel to Brentford for that entire game. But the big injury boost is all about Martin Odegaard. And it follows that big injury boost of Gabriel Jesus being part of the Brazilian national team that is obviously going to face Argentina tonight. So, as it stands, I'll always let you know that things never 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 be the same but they all come in through to do the needful and gabriel jesus has gone ahead to start for brazil you know i've just gotten this story coming in from uh, let me see brazil versus argentina um team news is not yet out but breaking news coming in from breaking news coming in from uh, breaking news coming in from uh, Brazil indicates that Gabriel Jesus is going to start for Brazil. <laughs> that is it. But wait and see in the next two hours from, I think one and a half hours from now, that's when I'm obviously going to obviously get to know exactly whether it's really great. But he looked good in training and he's also ready to play. And for Arsenal, all you would love to see to it that this guy plays part into that game of football. That is it. Such that over the weekend, you bring him in and obviously gives you the best that you deserve as a team. As would have gone ahead, obviously, put in some minutes in his legs like he has never before ever since he got an injury, a muscular injury as they played against Sevilla. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Bernardo Silva. While at the Portuguese national team during the international break, he had the following to say, I want to return to Benfica in the future if the club wants me at the time. Obviously, things will happen. So, players like Bernardo Silva, who are really underrated at Benfica, and they're really thrown to a loan at Monaco, and then Monaco sold him to Man City. When they reach the levels, they're going to hit to reach like they are at right now. They would love to obviously go back and really prove teams like Benfica that you made a very big mistake. And um, if not that, 
there might be something special with Benefica. Do you know why? When you look at Angel Di Maria, he went back to Benefica, you know? Very many players have gone up to Benefica, you know? So I think there is something special with Benefica. There is a huge attachment of, with Bernardo, for Bernardo Silva and Benefica, and they are really putting in a shift that <clears throat> I think Bernardo Silva feels that if at all he goes there, everything will go on and will go on as planned. But I think it will come like some four years from now or five years from now, as Bernard, I think, is 28 years of age, and he just has to obviously make sure that he moves to Barcelona. That's his dream club to play for. And I think next season, he's going to be playing for Barcelona after he renewed his contract or extended his contract at Man City for more two years. And a buyout clause was put there of 50 million euros. And I think for Man City, they should look for a replacement for this guy and a replacement for Kevin De Bruyne because Kevin De Bruyne is soon also running out of steam and he won't be able to perform at levels that everyone has been seeing him perform at. So Bernardo Silva is not going to go to Benfica in January, not in the summer, but we all anticipate that Bernardo Silva will leave Man City for Barcelona. If at all, Barcelona really have the money, 50 million euros. And I think they're obviously going to have it because there is a plan they're obviously drawing up to really sell players like Rafinha, you know, Ansu Fati, mm, Robert Lewandowski, and very many others to bring in fresh talent that will obviously get them to where they deserve to be. So let's wait and see whether Bernardo Silva will at a point X go back to Benfica, a team that obviously sold him to Monaco, and then after selling him to Monaco, he was sold to Manchester City. Now, lastly, Niza Kinsella. Niza Kinsella, he's, an, he's a Chelsea correspondent for the Standard Sport, has confirmed us that Levy Colwell and Malo Gusto are now expected to return ahead of Chelsea's trip to Newcastle on Saturday with both Nkuku and Lavia potentially four, but having potentially four more training sessions to prove their fitness to Mauritish, Mauricio or Pochettino's staff. So, four players are really returning and it's great, very, very great, especially Nkuku and Lavia coming in through because when you get in Lavia at the side of Chelsea, that means Enzo Fernandez will be played in the central attack midfield position, of which I think he offers something better than uh, Conor Garaga. Though, that does not stop Chelsea from obviously getting in a central attack midfielder in the January transfer window. And I think it's going to be one of their targets. As Nkunku, their striker also returns to it that he creates chances for that number nine. Nicholas Jackson, I think, now has six goals for Chelsea in the Premier League. That is really a very huge movement, and we obviously have to really understand exactly what that means. And for Malo Gusto, he missed out on a very big chance when they're playing Manchester City, but he's really a very good right back. And Levy Colwell, no doubts, he has gone ahead, obviously, impose himself into that Pochettino team, and no one can obviously throw him out of that team. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Throw smash the like button, comment and share. If you're only totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a day. Rock and David is my name. And tell me your thoughts about Odegaard on track to return on Saturday as Arsenal plays against Brentford. Uh, Bernardo Silva returning to Benfica. He hints on that. Do you think he will return? And what do you make about Malo Gusto, Levy Colwell, Ramio Lavia, and Nkunku boast as they obviously head to Newcastle. Will Chelsea be untouchable with all that squad? I thank you for watching in. Maybe later when the lineups are out, I must I might obviously draw a live to let you know whether Gabriel Jesus is into the squad or he's starting. I'm out. May the living to God bless you abundantly the Muslim Barakla of Bye bye.